Shout unto him today. Shout unto him today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keep those hands going for us, God, this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Just reach out to him and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Come on, reach out and just tell him this morning. That's what we're doing this morning. No matter how we feel, no matter what's going on, Lord, we surrender all to you this morning. Hallelujah. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Tell him, Lord, I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding. commitment to him today. We belong to you, O oh God. We give our mind, we give our thoughts to you. We give ourselves to you entirely this morning, O oh God.
everybody put your hands together for Jesus. Let's praise him for who he is this morning. Put your hands together for him this morning. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God on my
on, let's praise unto your God this morning. We need you this morning, oh God. We need you this morning, Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you today, oh God. Holy Spirit. Hear this praise in me from a great my soul sings to him.
a pope. When God came through, it seemed as if it was impossible by now because he was there. Let me encourage someone this morning. Maybe what you're going through, it seems hopeless. It seems that you have tried all other avenues, just like the woman with the issue of blood. But when we stand here today and we sing about a great God, don't look at how hard your situation is. Look to our God this morning. Our help comes not from the north, nor the east, nor the south, nor the west. But our help comes from him. Come on, let's wave your hand in his presence. Hallelujah. So whatever you're going through, say situation, my God is great. He do miracles so great. He specializes in the things that seems impossible. Go ahead and praise him for that this morning. Oh, for you. and bless our king this morning. No one should leave his house without worshiping him. So I'm giving an opportunity right now to open up your mouth and bless him. Tell the Lord something wonderful. 
Tell him who is to you this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. I'm going to invite everyone to be standing at this time. Hold on to the hands of the persons who stand next to you. And we're going to intercede. There's nothing too hard for our God. Because who is like him? He doesn't have to ask anyone any question to do anything for us. He moves according to his will. Hallelujah. That's how great our God is. He has no one any question. It's God all by himself. He does whatever pleases him. Hallelujah. And he said that when we are calling unto him, he's hearing and he knows even before what we need. And while we're praying, he's answering. I'm going to invite Sister Sharmin to come and as she prays, I want you to believe God for your miracle this morning. I want you to believe God for whatever he has for you. And not only to believe, but I want you to receive. Reach out and receive that which God has for you this morning. magnify you, Lord, for you are worthy to receive glory, honor, dominion, and power, Lord God. You are the ancient of days, the all-powerful, the all-knowing God. So this morning, Father, we bow before your throne just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord God, for the breath of life. Thank you, mighty God, that we come this morning in your presence. Oh, God, as we come, we humble bow before you, God, and we ask your forgiveness. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our trespasses. Oh, God, every unknown and an unknown sin this morning, Father, we confess them before you, Lord, and we ask you to wash us thoroughly from our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord God, that our praises may come up to thee this morning, Father. God, we bow before your throne, for you said we should call unto you, and you will hear from heaven, and you will forgive us, Lord, and you will heal our land. So this morning, God, we come, mighty God, because you said, Lord God, a broken and a contrite heart, you will not despise. So this morning, God, as we come before you broken, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, that you will mend the broken pieces of our life this morning. In the name of Jesus, we cry out to you, God, from a dry and thirsty land. God, we are saying this morning that we are thirsty for more of you, Jesus. God, we are saying this morning, God, that we hunger up the righteousness this morning. Lord, we ask you to come down in our presence, Lord, and fill this house with your glory. I pray, mighty God, that we will feel, oh God, your hands around us strong. This morning, God, we will feel the brush of angels' wing. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord God, that you will move from the pulpit to the pew. God, we pray that you will go from bench to bench, Lord God, and you will touch us collectively and individually this morning, God. For our soul cried out to thee, O Lamb of God. This morning, God, we cast down everything that is not of you, God. We command every stronghold to be broken now in the name of Jesus. We command the enemy to take his flight in the name of Jesus. This morning, we take deliverance back in the name of Jesus. God, we take back the joy of your people, God. We take back good health this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you this morning that you will move upon everyone this morning. Whatever the situations are that they came this morning, I command them to fall. Every chain this morning, we break them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you said that when we stand in the name of Jesus, nothing can stand before us. So upon your authority this morning, we take back, Lord, all that the enemy have robbed us. And this morning, God, we crush him in the name 
of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done in our life. Let your will be done in the church. Let your will be done in Jamaica land. We love God. Move by your power this morning. Move by your spirit this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. For we need you, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing, Lord. Without you, God. We are like a ship drifting without a sail. Lord, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that built it. So God, this morning we depend upon you. Holy Spirit of the living God, saturate us, God. We need you this morning. God, when all of the help and all of the comfort fail, God, the heart of your people is failing for fear. But help them to know this morning, God, that you are in control. You are in control. And when you speak, Lord God, thus said the Lord, it happened. God, you speak to wind and they obey. God, you touched Lazarus and he came back. You healed, oh God, the lame. You opened blind eyes. You have never lost a battle, Lord. So nothing this morning is too hard for you. So Lord, let faith arise in your people this morning. Lift your faith, God, to know that whatever the situations are this morning, that you are in control, God. We come against sickness in the name of Jesus. As you come down in this house today, Lord, we come against every sickness in this house and we command it in the name of Jesus to leave now. We command, Lord, some dead situation to come alive. We call back every vein, every sinew, every cell, every membrane to line up to the word of God. By the spirit of God, let the blood flow through your people veins this morning. No sick body shall leave through these doors, but every one Lord shall receive the healing virtue of God. Like when the woman touched you, Lord, you felt the virtue went from your body. So let the virtue of God flow upon every sick body today. Walk in the hospital room this morning. God, we pray for that little girl in Bustamante this morning, Father. We ask you to touch her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray, God, that right now, that your blood, oh God, shall go through her blood, Father. Let there be a whole Holy Ghost transfusion right now in the name of Jesus we call it done by the power of the Holy Ghost Lord God there shall be testimonies God of your goodness of your healing in the name of Jesus Father we pray for those who are down those who are depressed Lord lift your spirit and let there be a spirit of rejoicing in the name of Jesus for you have won the victory for us God so we are victorious Father we pray God that you will come down in this place Father I pray for the praise and worship team God that you will fill them with fire God anoint the musicians as they play skillfully this morning Father we pray God for your servant that shall bring forth the word the Lord the spirit of boldness will come upon him this morning that he will deliver the word oh God straight from your throne room it shall go forth God with power with anointing and with clarity and Lord it shall accomplish Accomplish that which you please. Father, we pray that sinners will be saved. We pray that backsliders will return to the whole and mark. And God, your people shall be rooted and grounded in you, Jesus. Let your will be done in this house, Lord, as we say thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing and will be doing today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, a bigger hand of praise to the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for ministering and touching us in our situations. We thank you, Master. We thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a short while. Thank you, Sister Charmaine. God is indeed a good God. Amen. And he deserves our praise. Hallelujah. Did you take a praise for the Lord this morning? And did you bring a praise? Don't take home your praise. We'll open up your mouth and let from your belly flow the praise of God. Because he deserves our praise and he deserves our worship. Can we just wave our hands in his presence this morning? Can you feel the sweet presence of the Lord in his house? You don't answer me, man. Are you feeling the presence of the Lord? Yes. And when he comes in his house in a very tangible way, there shall be miracles and deliverance in the house of the Lord. So I want to encourage us just to stay focused. Don't be distracted, but stay focused on the Lord and that which you want from the Lord. If you come expecting, do not leave disappointed. Sometimes we are so easily distracted. We shift and we move with the ship, but just stay focused. Don't let God pass by and, you know, you don't feel his touch or you don't get what you want from him. But stay focused on God. Now look for nobody. Look for Jesus. And whatever you need from him today, allow him. When he's giving you, if you don't see when he's giving you, you can't receive it. But stay focused. Have your mind focused on the Lord, Sister Will. And whatever you need from Jesus, Sister Sanky, reach out and take it today. Amen? Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. The scripture lesson comes to us from Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to verse 20. Brother Delroy will be coming with the reading. We ask that when you have found the text, that you stand to honor the reading of the word of the Lord. morning church just for emphasis Ephesians 5 reading from verse 1 to 20 and we'll ask to stand in reverence to the holy word of God amen it reads be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart of the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to finish the sentence, we go to verse 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another 
in the fear of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Harris. Praise God. It's good that you're in God's house this morning. Are you happy to see a neighbor this morning? I want you to find five persons and greet them this morning. And ensure that somebody in the, in the lot you don't know. Just greet someone. Thank you, Brother Harris. Come on, don't wait on anybody. Be the nice person, the loving and kind person who loves people, and loves to reach out to people. And just greet five persons. Ensure that you don't know one person in the lot. Ask the person's name and tell the person your name. And sister Amai, find your five. Come on, find five. I said five, at least five. Don't find three or two. If you sit beside someone you don't know them, Introduce yourself to the person. Come on, the last person's hand will just shake. Just give the person an encouraging word. I hardly see any movement around the back there, you know. Come on, love on someone this morning. Hallelujah. All right. Do one last thing for me. I want you to find two persons. Don't move right where you are. Just smile with two persons. Just warm someone's heart to the smile this morning. Yeah, show them the, the 32. If you don't have that any amount, you have to leave the show it to them. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Certainly the Holy Spirit is in his house this morning. And we just want to make the Holy Ghost welcome. Put your hands above your heads and give the Holy Ghost a round of applause. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We salute you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just bless the Lord for Bishop and his family this morning? I see one first time visitor here. We are very happy that um, he's here this morning. So I'm going to just invite Mr. Kenroy Davis to stand up. Mr. Ken Kenroy Davis. Am I missing someone? The person is standing up. Is that little boy? All right, put your hands together for him. Thank you for coming, Kenroy. And we trust that you'll come again. And if you don't have a Sunday school, our Sunday school begins at 9.30. We're inviting you to come back next week and join our Sunday school class. Put your hands together again for Ken Roy. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. And let me ask, if maybe you're here for the first time and the usher did not get your name. If you're such a person, could you raise your hand? Put your hands again for the ushers. Very good job done this morning. Oh, one person at the front. Oh, take that back. Can you stand for me, my little sister? Let's put our hands together for her. God bless you, and thank you so much for coming. And we also want to invite you to Sunday school next week. If you don't have a church attending, then you can be at 9.30 next week and to our Sunday school class. To all of our regular visiting friends, we are so happy that you have made Evangel Tabernacle your place of worship. And so I'm going to invite our members just to put their hands together and bless the Lord for for all of our regular visiting friends. We are so happy that you have made Evangel Tabernacle your place of worship. And there are some of our members who we have not seen for a while. It's good that you are, you are here today. We just want to thank God for Sister Vivian over there. Good to see you, Sister Vivian. Yes, you, Sister Vivian. Come on, she's talking. Put your hands together, bless the Lord for her. Welcome, it's good to see you today. Also, Sister Blair, put your hands together for her. Good to see you today. Hallelujah. You were not here last week? You weren't here last week? Could you raise your hand? Welcome. Put your hands together for them. Good to see you. Welcome. You're at the right place in your Father's house. And we thank God for that. Can you just bless the Lord for the praise team this morning? Come on, 
Excellent worship this morning. Put your hands together for them. Let's thank God for our musicians. Boy, them joints on key this morning in early song in a month. Boy, put your hands together for them. We thank God for them. Hallelujah. For our ushers and counselors, put your hands together for them. For our board members, come on, man. We thank God for them. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. For the technical persons up there, we thank God for you. And as I always say, this is a joy. What would church be like without you, our members? We thank God for you. Put your hands together for yourselves this morning. Sister Carrie on, that's your Aussie, right? Welcome, Aussie. Put your hands together for him. So good to see you this morning. As the people of God, let's continue to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. For he is, and his mercy is enduring for. God bless you as you continue to worship him. Hallelujah. We're going to stand to our feet and we're going to go around and we're going to hug and we'll greet somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Oh, smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile.
but my Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. Let me invite our ushers to come at this time as we minister unto him. With our giving today, you have your tithes, your offerings. Just take it out at this time, please. Hold it in your right hand. If you have brought your missions given, please do so. If you have not yet filled out a form for your missions given, it's important that you do so. And if you have filled out a form, you have not brought that form in as yet, you need to do so. Amen. Our missions given is what we use to bless our community at large. If you have not filled out a missions giving card, ask the Husher Sawan, please. Let us continue to minister to our community in the name of Jesus. What your tithes are offering, will you lift it up to God at this time, please? And as you do, let's look at the screen and let us make this declaration today in the name of Jesus. After three, one, two, three. Father, because I'm a tither and a giver, I thank you for the rights you have given unto me to decree your word over my life. I therefore decree that I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed in the city and in the field. I am blessed in my finances and I'm blessed as to our houses of my savings. I'm blessed to be the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed to be the head and not the tail. And I am blessed of only and not beneath. As I commit my tithes and my offerings to you, I receive the promise of your blessings over my life. I speak your word that no demon in hell shall be able to hinder, delay, or stop your blessings upon my life. And I pray that you use my tithes and my offerings to help establish your word in the hurt realm, cause life delivered and changed, and bring in the harvest of souls to the kingdom of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Praise team.
hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Showers of blessings we need. Come on, tell yourself, God, that's what I need today. Your showers of blessings. Oh, I receive it, Lord. Clap your hands and shout a praise to him today. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. Thank God. Let me invite our Evangel Tabernacle praise worshipers at this time, and they'll be coming to minister to us. Can you put your hands there, please, and just make them welcome at this time. and continue to give God praise. Come on, clap your hands for him this morning. Come on, give him some praise. So many times we go to situations, the devil lick us down, tell us all sorts of things, but we have never lost our praise. Our praise is what keep us going. Even when the time is dark, even when it seems there's no way out, once you have a praise, Come on, let me hear the people of God just yes, give him a praise. The situation might look rough. The situation might look tough. But I still got a praise this morning. I still have a praise to my God. Because he has been good. Amen. Bless the Lord.
But most of all, come on, lift your hands. But most of all, but most of all, but most of all, <laughs> I never lost my praise. Come on, have you lost it? Do you still have it? If you still have your praise, close your eyes. Just wave your hands across the sanctuary today. Let the devil know that you still have your praise. <laughs> Let the enemy know that you still have your praise. Hallelujah. I still have my still have my praise. Stand if you can, please, those of you who can't. I understand, children, it's no time to move on to your time of ministry. Thank you, praise worshipers. Great ministry, lovely voices, blended together, a lot of harmony and melody. All goes the glory of the living God. Amen. It is all about him. And we are still saying, I've never lost my praise. And I want to make a commitment. I will never lose my praise. Sickness will come, but I will not lose my praise. Criticism will come, but I will not lose my praise. My neighbors may rise up against me. Co-workers may come against me. But I'm making one commitment today. I will never lose my praise. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling in my body. I will not lose my praise. Come on, close your eyes. Make that declaration. God, help me, help me, help me not to lose my praise. Because many things may come against you intended for us to lose our praise. But I am committed and I'm declaring today. I will not lose my, my praise. Hallelujah. 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 Not going to lose my praise. I will not sell it either. It's still my praise. And I still have a praise want to speak to us today for a few minutes hopefully not over 30 minutes want to challenge our hearts with a word that I think is from the throne of God and thereafter I feel very anointed to lay hands on a few people today not my area of ministry but I feel God telling me to lay hands on a few people today so let me challenge us with a word from Ephesians chapter 5 and there are three verses, 18 through 19. Remain standing as we echo this word today. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 19. Can you read this word with me, please? Let's echo it together in the name of Jesus. After three. And one, two, three. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Okay, we'll not finish the sentence. Stop there. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you. Enjoying your company and your presence. Declaring that where you are, there is indeed liberty. So, God, we pray that you will be given freedom in our lives today. Freedom to touch us. Freedom to challenge us. Freedom to minister to our weaknesses. Freedom to encourage us where we are hurting, to heal us. Almighty God, where we need to be healed, to anoint us where anointing is needed. To let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts where hearts are empty. Almighty God, we just want to make ourselves available to you. To use us in whatever way you see fit. We are your people, Heavenly Father. And we commit ourselves and commit this time of ministry to you. Have your way, we ask of thee today. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, hold my soul and all that is within me. 
Bless is holy name. Let's talk and reason together today around this topic. Can I have that topic, Brother Wright? Hallelujah. Around this topic. What are you filled with? What are you filled with? Can you ask your neighbor that question? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you filled with? Touch your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm talking with you now. What are you filled with? Are you filled with pride? <laughs> Don't go there. Don't follow me now. But what are you filled with? So we want to reason around this topic for a few minutes today. What are you filled with? You know, it is largely said that there are two things that God, and I hate to use the word, cannot fill. Two things that God cannot fill. And these things are, he will not and cannot fill something that is already filled. If something is already filled, then God will not fill it again. Depending on what it is filled with. And secondly, God will not fill something that is closed. So again, God will not fill something that is already filled. And God will not fill something that is closed. Something that is closed. Therefore, I think the questions to us today are, what are we filled with? And are we open or are we closed? Are we open or are we closed? And can you guys work with me up there, please? Don't give me what I don't want. So are we open or are we closed? So number one, he will not fill something that is already filled. And number two, are we open or are we closed? Because if we are closed, there's no way for us to receive from God. To receive from God, we have to open that which is closed. And if we are filled already, we will not pour something clean into something that is unclean. So what are we filled with? You know, it's a fact that whatever a person is filled with, that thing will control that person. Do you believe that? That whatever a person is filled with, that thing will control you. You know, you look outside and you see a man walking down the road and he's going from this side to the other side. It tells you that he's filled with something. And what he's filled with, it does what? It controls him. It controls him. So whatever we are filled with, will always uh, control us. A person's actions and behavior tells what spirit uh, control him and what spirit control her. So therefore, to know what a person is filled with, uh, let us look on the person's behavior. Let us look on the person's uh, action. Because whatever you are filled with, it uh, controls uh, you. It controls you. And, um, I do believe that before we can move to that next level of our walk with God, that they are two very important questions that must be answered, must be asked, and must be answered. Number one, do we know what we are filled with? Do we know what we are filled with? And uh, number two, if we do know what we are filled with, are we honest enough to ask God to empty us so that he can fill us with that which will last? 
Because when all is said and done, every single one of us is filled with something. There is no person in the house who is literally empty. It might mean that we don't like what we are filled with, but we are filled with something. The other question is, do we like what we are filled with? Do we know what we are filled with? And how can we empty ourselves to receive what we need to be filled with? I trust that you are there. You know, last week we looked at a father who brought his son to Jesus. In the book of St. Mark chapter 9 from verse 20, from verse 16 going down to verse 29, we look at this father who brought his son to Jesus. He brought his son to Jesus because the boy was filled with something. But what the boy was filled with was not what the boy wanted. It was not what the father wanted. It was not what anybody around him wanted. But yes, he was filled with something. In St. Mark chapter 9 and verse 22 in the words of the father, the father talked about what the boy was filled with. And he said to Jesus that master oftentimes in this thing that the boy was filled with, it cast him into the fire and into waters because of this thing that the boy was filled with and wanted to destroy him. Now when all is said and done, it was not the boy's doing. It was not the boy you wanted to be cast into fire. It was not the boy you wanted to be cast into water. It was not the boy who wanted to destroy himself. It was the spirit that was in him wanted to destroy him. And therefore, from time to time, the spirit controlled him. He did not want to go off into the fire and commit suicide or literally take his life. But there was something in him that controlled him. The truth is there are several behaviors that we are seeing today. And we know that the behaviors are not natural. But these behaviors are coming about because there is a spirit that controls individuals and causes individuals to behave in a particular way. But Paul in his writing to the Ephesians church, he said, hey, I want to advise you. I want to counsel you. I want to, uh, I want to beg you that you don't be filled with wine because in this wine, it will control you. It will damage you. It will cause you to do things that tomorrow morning, when you get back to your senses, you will be ashamed. But I want to recommend a spirit in that should control you. Amen. That you don't have to be afraid or ashamed because this spirit will lead you in the path of righteousness. And this spirit will not lead you astray and cause you to behave in any untoward way because this spirit will direct your attention and be filled with the, with the spirit where you can speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual song. Amen. When you have a hymn, you will never Never lose your praise because yet though you walk into the valley of the shadow of death you are not going to fear any evil because he is with thee and his rod and his top will always comfort thee. So with him as a, as a praise worship a song you will never lose your praise. Amen. If you are losing your praise, you have to ask yourself, what is it that you are filled with? Because in the midst of our takes and pain, and once you have him, you still have a praise. Amen. It doesn't matter who trample upon you. As long as he has you and lives in you, you will still have your praise. You will still have your praise. Now it's amazing the different methods that the enemy is using to control the lives of people today. 
they are all different types of spirit that are daily and leash upon the crop and creation. And you wonder what is uh, happening. All different types of foreign spirits uh, that are possessing us uh, and are controlling us uh, and are causing us to behave uh, in different ways. What are you filled with? What are you filled with? You now there are many who are surprised as to how their lives have changed overnight. And it's all because something possesses them. Something takes hold of their lives. It happened because of what we are seeing on television. Because there are certain spirits that can come through your television set. There are certain things that we are hearing, amen, from our friends. And, and we are hearing on the radio. And there are certain things that we are listening to. And there are certain companies that we are hanging out with. And there are certain books that we are reading. And there are all kinds of spirits in these things that will control us. What are you filled with? And all of a sudden, your good, good child start behaving in a particular way. Look and see what the boy is watching. Look and see what the boy is reading. Look and see the company the boy is keeping. Look and see what the boy is listening to when he plugged those earphones in his ears. What is he listening to? To, because all of these gates are gateways that the enemy uses from time to time uh, to possess and to control us. Uh, and all of a sudden, the boy who was meek, uh, he had become uh, violent and started to misbehave. Uh, it is because there is a spirit in him uh, that is uh, controlling uh, him. Are uh, you understanding me? But what are we filled with? What spirit is controlling us? You see, because if deliverance is ever going to take place, it must take place when you identify the spirit that you that is controlling you. Because I believe that the devil has an assignment and he has assigned a spirit. It could be a spirit of infirmity. It could be a spirit of drunkenness. It could be a spirit of this, a spirit of that. But the devil has assigned spirits over different areas and you are seeing the behavior in the lifestyle of our people where men will get up and kill at will for nothing at all and what a spirit controlling your life what spirit what spirit what spirit just for a couple more minutes let me talk a little bit about this are you possessed or filled with the spirit of pride or arrogance, are you a boaster? Because a boasting is a spirit. Arrogance is a spirit. Pride is a spirit. And there are some people who believe that they are better than everybody else. But before the spirit of God can come into your life, you will have to empty yourself of that spirit. Because he will never walk with the proud or the scornful. So we have to humble ourselves. Amen. At the feet of Jesus. But my brothers and my sisters, we are only going to know we are only can, we only can be delivered in from such a spirit when we identify the spirit amen you might have a bigger house than your sister but you are not better than your sister you might can change your clothes more often than your brother but you are not oh you're not talking to me now but you are not better than but the devil has elevated us and has swelled up our head and of course us to believe that we are better than some people. We were all created in the likeness of God out of the 
dust of the ground. And God created man. You're not talking to me, church. Amen. Your dirt was not better than mine. Amen. People walk on your dirt. And people walk on my dirt. And God said to Adam, And dust you are. And unto dust shall you go. Don't be possessed. Don't be filled. And don't be controlled with the spirit of pride. It will destroy you. And even in the church, we think that we're better than. You're not talking to me. Not because you can eat chicken, I can and I eat chicken back, you're not better than me. You're not understanding me today. You're not understanding me today. And if we are going to have the Spirit of God move freely in our hearts and in our church, we must understand that the ground is level at the foot of the cross. That Jesus died for the rich and he died for the poor. He died for men. He died for women. He died for boys. He died for girls. And we need to reach a place where our hearts are emptied before God. And say, God, I have discovered that there is some pride in me. I am boasting so much, too much. I've become a haragan too much. But I need to be filled with the spirit of the most high God. Because Jesus reminds us that we shall receive a power when the Holy Ghost has come upon us. And we shall be his weaknesses. But pride will stand in the way. Somebody shout hallelujah. What are we filled with? The Bible talks about the Pharisees. I think we, we did some in, in, in Sunday school a few weeks ago. A Pharisees and a publican. Both of them were Christian. They went to the same church. They knelt at the same altar. They were praying to the same God. But the Pharisees prayed and said, God, I am thank you that I am better than this man. Amen. I fast twice per week and I pay my tithes. Amen. I don't do this and I don't do that. But the Bible continues. It says in that the publican bowed down his head and would not even look up towards heaven. But he placed his hand across his heart and he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth that the publican left the church and more justified in than the proud Pharisees in the are far too many people you are coming to church but pride is still in your heart there are some people you can't shake their hands there are some people you can't greet because the pride is in the heart lift your hands and say search me oh god search me oh god creating me a clean heart oh god empty me a pride him to me of pride, him to me of pride, him to me of pride. What are you filled with? There are some people, they boast until they become liars. Are you understanding me? Because every boaster has to be a liar. Because you are going to push the thing a little bit out and say, you're not, you're not understanding me. But hey, 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 understand me today. I believe in my spirit. I know in my heart uh, that God is going to take you guys to a higher place. Uh, I have been in prayer. I've been in fasting. Uh, and God is telling me to tell the church uh, that they must not miss their season. Uh, that they must not miss their time. Uh, every little in the runs that will stop you from getting your breakthrough. It had to be purged. It had to be cleansed. We have to be washed of the spirit of pride. Must go. The spirit of pride must go. I want you to know that you are my brother. You are my sister. It doesn't matter what you eat and go to bed tonight. You are still my brother. And God did not create me better and create you less. But he created us from the dust of the, of the earth. What are you possessed with? You know, the Bible reminds us that he that exalted himself shall be abased. But he who humbled himself shall be exalted. 
We are not filled with self-righteousness. We are not to be filled with a judgmental spirit. But we must humble ourselves in the very presence of the living God. What are you filled with? What are you filled with? Have you ever sat and asked yourself the question, what am I filled with? What am I filled with? Because there are some people who are filled and controlled by and with the spirit of anger. Everything angers them. Even when God wants to move in their lives, if God don't come at a certain time, they get angry. What are you filled with? You know, Proverbs reminds us, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a sneer for thy soul. Are you controlled by anger? When people say things to you that upset you, how do you behave? How do you react to your spouse? How do you be react to your children? How do you react to your parents? When your neighbor sees you and hear you at your house, do they see an angry person? Do they, do they hear an angry person? How do your children see you? And can they sit you down even when they tell you something that you are not pleased with, but yet you have the spirit of meekness because you are not drunk with wine. We are in his excess, but you you are filled with the spirit of God. You know how to walk, how to move, how to talk with somebody in the spirit of meekness. What are you filled with? What are you filled with? There are some people from them wake up in the morning, quarrel, then go back to bed at night. They even dream themselves a quarrel. You're not understanding me. They even dream to themselves a quarrel. They live a quarrelsome life. If you greet them, then quarrel. If you don't greet them, then quarrel. If you give them something, quarrel. If you don't give them nothing, then And it is not that them hungry because a hungry man is what? It is not that, that them hungry. They are just angry people. Just angry people. What are we filled with? Some people are controlled by the spirit of lying. They just can't stop telling lies. They just can't stop telling lies. And I could go deeper in that. But you know what happened? There are some people who are controlled by a critical spirit. It doesn't matter how good something is, they have to criticize. They have to criticize. They will never praise. They never commend. But they have to find something to criticize. It doesn't matter what is happening. You are going to find something to criticize. Critical spirit. Hey, when you see somebody, when you see something, what first comes to your mind? Do you find something to praise? Or do you find something to criticize? And that will tell you what spirit controls you. Be reminded that it is a spirit. Don't even take it and start to hurt yourself. You are controlled by a spirit. And many a times when you are controlled by a spirit, it is not that you like what is happening to you, but you cannot help what is happening to you because your life is in the hands of a spirit. But there is still power in the name of there is still power in the name of Jesus. And this service is designed today and so that every power of hell will be destroyed and defeated. That every man, every woman, every boy, every girl and can be honest with yourself. We can be honest with ourselves. God open my eyes and show me what spirit control me and show me what I am filled with and show me what spirit possesses my heart and God I only want to be controlled in 
with the spirit of the most high God. I only want to be controlled and possessed with the word of the living God. I want something in my heart that doesn't matter what is happening. I still have a praise. I still have a worship. I still have a thank you Jesus. I want to feel the power and the spirit of God in my spirit. What a spirit can control you. What spirit? What spirit? What spirit? What spirit? You know what I like? Is that whatever it is, it can be broken. It can be broken. Do you want it to be broken? Do you want the spell to go? Do you want to live in the peace of the living God? Be reminded the command from Jesus is do not be drunken with wine. In other words, wine represents all the worldly spirits that are outside there that will control the hearts and the lives of people. But Jesus, or rather Paul, he gives a recommendation. He said, but you must be filled with the spirit of God. And when you are filled with him based on Paul, you must speak to yourself with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melodies in your heart unto God. And whatever we do in words or in deeds, we must do it as unto God. As unto God. What spirit controlling us? What spirit controlling us? What spirit controlling us? You know, I quickly want to tell us about what Jesus, I hinted at it earlier on, what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Because I really believe that if we are going to be strong, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. There are certain work and certain assignment given that nobody can undertake without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, he said, I'm going away and I have a work for you guys to do. But you can't do it in your own might. You can't do it in your own power. So I want you to tarry here at Jerusalem and wait until you have been and do with the power of the Holy Spirit. The word continues. It said, and when they were assembled together and they asked of him, God, will thou at this time restore the kingdom unto his will? And Jesus said, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something else. It is not for you to know the times or the season wherewith the Father had put in his own power, but he shall receive a power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall shall be witnesses unto me. I come to tell every born again child of God that there is a work to be done, but it can't be done in our own strength. It had to be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That there are tasks that must be accomplished, and it must be accomplished in the power of the Holy Spirit. I hear Jesus saying, Amen, just after he was baptized by John the Baptist, Amen. When he was baptized, the voice of the Father came from heaven. And the voice of the Father said, And this is my beloved Son. I want you to hear ye him. But just as the Father spoke, a dove was let down from the heaven in the former type of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, he went all over where he was taken up in the wilderness. He was tempted by the enemy. My God, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights but because he had no power inside of him the devil could not turn him over the church of the living God we need the power of God we need to get rid of pride we need to get rid of self-righteousness and judgmental spirit and critical spirit we need to say God empty me of self and carnal weaknesses I need the 
power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God declares that Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Oh God, touch yourself, church. We need the spirit of the living God upon us. And there are some challenges that we can't overcome. And there are some battles that we can't fight. But we can do it with the power of Almighty God. He is available. He is present. And Jesus said, I shall send the comforter. It is expedient for me that I go away. Because if I go not away, the comforter will not come. He is here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Why? Because he hath anointed me. Oh, glory to God. Stand to your feet in the house today, church. He hath anointed me in the balcony. Stand to your feet. Everybody, if you can lift your hands, just wave them in the presence of the never-failing God. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive. When you receive the Spirit of God, it is more than just running up and down in church and speaking in tongues. It is more than just speaking in tongues. We are talking about the power of the living God, the evidence. Amen. Yes, we have to speak in unknown tongues, but the Holy Spirit is more than just an unknown tongue. He said he shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be every child of God need to be endued need to be baptized need to be anointed with the spirit of the living God oh we need you Lord but be reminded God cannot fill that which is filled already and God will not fill that which is closed. So as we hope on, as we lift our hands to him, let's close our eyes. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me, Jesus. Prepare me for the work of ministry. I can't do it in my might or in my own power. I need a Pentecostal touch today. I need a Pentecostal touch today. Come on, don't look at anybody else. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, on one accord, and suddenly there came a shout in from heaven as the sound of a rushing mighty wind. I want you to zero in on him today. And don't think about anything else, anybody else, but lean on God. Lock your neighbor out. Lock your friends out. And say, God, I need him today. I need him today. And there is a work that I must do. And there are some tasks that I must take on I need him today I need him today come on lift your hands to him now let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me
let's bow before him for a minute or two. We need you, Jesus. In your might and your power. Purge our hearts right now. Help us to empty ourselves of that which we are filled with and make preparation for the filling of your Holy Spirit. Oh, how much we need him. So Almighty God, break every other control the enemy has upon our lives now in the name of Jesus. Let the freedom of your Holy Spirit come and dwell with us. Forgive us where we need to be forgiven. Cleanse us where we need to be cleansed. Wash us where we need to be washed. Let our batteries be recharged for the task that is ahead today. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. We invite your company. We invite your moving. We invite Almighty God your filling. We invite Almighty God you to come in whatever way you see fit. And do among the willing vessels what is needed to be done. Keep on worshiping. Keep on worshiping. Just keep on worshiping. Yes, Lord. Keep on. Keep the worship going. Yes, Lord. shall be given. Seek and we shall find and knock the door shall be opened. Hey! Set me free. Let the power of your holy love fall on me. While we keep the worship going, I want to invite everyone church or a connector, a Sunday school teacher, a departmental head committee member, come on down right now. You lead a small group, you come on down. And as you come, lift your hands. Eh? Come on, as close as you can get to the altar. Push back the chairs. Let's get those chairs back, please. Keep it 
going. Keep singing.
all I want. I'm just going to ask you to just lift your hands in his presence today. And if you really mean it, just say, Lord, you're all I want. You're all I ever needed. You're are close today. Let me know. Let me know that you are near, oh God. Let me know you are near, oh God. I want to make a next altar call. I want to invite everyone saved in the house. You are not a Christian. You're the balcony on the ground floor. You are not a Christian. The Spirit of God is all over this place. Walk from where you are. Come right now. Come right now. The rest where you don't even go back to your seat. Just stand up where you are and say, so come, 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 come. Keep singing. Praise to you. Hallelujah. You're all I want, oh God. You're all I want, oh God. You're all I want, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. with me today see what revival starts it starts first with the leaders it starts first with the leaders I've been laying down before God for some days because I want God to do in me first what he proposed to do in the church the next layer of leadership have to be the leaders in the various departments etc then there'll be a mighty pouring across this place. God is preparing us for things that we have never seen before, for things that we might have heard of, but have never seen it. These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of restoration. These are the days of power, glory, anointing. You are all we need, oh God. Can I have some workers, please? Male workers, come quickly. Have some men in the name of Jesus. Not a female worker, okay. Glory to God. Come, my brother, come on down. A couple more men, a few more men. Men workers, come men, come men, come men, come men. There are a few men at the altar right now. Hallelujah. Mm. Keep the worship going, keep the worship going. Ensure that everybody has a hand. Lay on somebody. Lay hand on somebody. Ushers, counselors, lay hand on somebody right now. Keep singing praise to you. If you can lift your hands in the congregation, lift your hands, close your eyes in the balcony. Don't be a spectator now. Let the worship go to God. Let the worship go up. Let the worship go up. As you lay hands on these people, you pray. You pray for them. Hey! Father, 
in the powerful, precious, holy name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We come to you today. We come to you, Almighty God, on behalf of your children. Many have been controlled, Almighty God, by spirits that Almighty God lured them to sin. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that that spirit will be destroyed today and never ever return to their lives again in the name of Jesus. So Almighty God, whatever the names of these spirits are, we rebuke these spirits right now by the power of the living God. Lord, we know that there is a power in the name of Jesus. And we speak to every dumb, deaf, devil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command you to take your flight and go in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that your full and your free salvation will touch the hearts and the lives of these individuals today. Almighty God, we pray for total in transformation. We pray that their lives will be turned around and by the power of the living God that they will never ever be the same again in the name of Jesus. Oh, your hands to all the altar church. Shout with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, mm. we break every tie in the name of Jesus. We loose uh, every trap in the name of Jesus. Oh, we come against every desire for sinful practices uh, and we curse and bind it now and we loose you from it today in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So we declare freedom. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, glory, glory, glory. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. At the altar and the balcony everywhere, lift your hands. Lift up a worship. Say something to God. Open your mouth. Uh, even thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Uh, lift up a worship. Uh, yes, in the name of
your feet, church. Release a double fall anointing over this congregation today. Let no person leave as they came today. Those who are sick be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are discouraged, we pray for the courage of God and that good news will meet you on your way going home. Those who are possessed and controlled by other spirits, we free you today from those spells and those spirits in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing strengthen and save, heal, deliver by the power of the living God. Come on, put your hands together. Just worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him. Be seated, please. Deacon Baker will be coming, but while she's coming, let me just say this, that this evening at 6.30 will be our communion service. And I want to challenge you to be in this communion service later on. It will be a chain breaker communion service. It will be a time when we're going to lay hands on every person who is sick in body. This will be a real experience of the powerful touch of God. Whatever is happening in your body, come to communion tonight. Be prayed up before you come and come prepared to receive as you have never received before. I challenge you to be here this evening in the name of Jesus. Shall we bless the Lord? Amen. Amen. The word of God said, without vision, the people perish. We just want to hold on to the vision, embrace it, and prepare. Let us prepare ourselves for the move of God. Because God is about to move, and we don't want to miss out on that season. Just bear with me as I take you through the announcement for... This week, this evening at 5 p.m., Deacon Brian would like to meet with all rangers. So rangers, wherever you are, this evening be here at 5 p.m. Your leader will guide you as to what will be done going forward. Just to reiterate what Pastor has said earlier on, our Lord's Supper service and prayer healing service will be this evening at 6.30. Please come on out. Invite a friend, invite a sick. Come and expect the healing touch of God because God is in this place and he's going to heal. He's going to deliver. So come tonight, pray it up and ready for the move of God. Tuesday, before I go to Tuesday, Monday at 7 p.m. will be connectors meeting. So all connectors, make yourself available to meet tomorrow at 7 p.m. Tuesday at 10 a.m. will be combined fasting. So if you can't come into the sanctuary to fast wherever you are, make it a time of fasting and prayer. So the region, this, um, this region, Old Arbor region, will be meeting here on Tuesday for a time of fasting. Wednesday at 7 p.m. will be Bible study, and we will continue the study on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Thursday at 7 p.m. will be choir practice. 
Friday at 7 p.m. will be youth meeting. Saturday morning at 6 a.m. will be intercessory prayer. And if you miss the morning prayer, be back Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Also, to really emphasize that this Saturday, there will be three funerals for loved ones of our brethren here. I want us to make an effort to divide up ourselves and to support our sisters in this time of uh, grief. Sister Trisha's father will be church at the New Testament church at, uh, 10, at 11 a.m. So please, for those of us who support uh, that funeral, it's the New Testament church at Rodens Pen, and the service will commence at uh, 11 a.m. Sister Maxine's grandmother will be at Victoria in uh, Clarendon. So persons who are interested in going to Clarendon to support Sister Maxine, please speak with her immediately after church. And we all know who Sister Maxine is. But just in case somebody don't know your Sister Maxine, all right, that's she over there. Sister Shellyon's mother will be um, at what town, St. Anna, the funeral service will commence at 12 noon. The bus will leave here at 9.30 a.m. Persons who want to support Sister Shellyon, I'm going to ask you to speak with Sister Velta Cole immediately after church. Sister Cole, where are you? There's somebody who, Sandman, they're not going to see you. Right, so that's Sister Cole down there. You're interested in going to St. Anne. Please speak with her. The bus will leave at 9.30 Saturday morning. All right. For persons who are celebrating birthday, where are you? Where are the birthday celebrants? Where is Kemoy Baker? I don't have anybody. Stand, man. Stand. Stand. All the birthday celebrants. All right, they are there. Brother Troy? a clap from our hearts to yours. Do I have anybody celebrating anniversary throughout this month? Whether or not your other half is here, nobody for anniversary. God bless you. Thank you, Deaconess. Let's stand together, please. God bless you. Let me say it's really a joy having you all here at Evangel Tabernacle for worship today. To our first time visitors, be reminded if you don't have a church home,